Hello everybody, welcome back to the beginner walkthrough of AI War 2. For our second episode, we will be diving into the gameplay here. Tutorial is going to be the name for our campaign, and here we go. Classic Fleet Difficulty 4. Always, always, always a good idea in AI War, if you aren't, like, waiting for something to happen, pause. Get yourself in the habit of pausing enough time to make the decisions you want to make, then make the decisions that advance the simulation after you've put in the orders. Okay, so there's a couple ways that I could do this to get us going, get everything explained. One is I could spend like an hour and a half or something close to that explaining everything in the interface. That's not going to happen. I'm not going to put everybody to sleep. I'm going to try to explain just what is needed to accomplish the tasks in some sort of reasonable order. Now, that means I may miss things. So if there's something where you're thinking, look, what was that all about? Why did he do that? I don't understand what just happened. Please let me know down in the comments. I'll try to make sure I correct that and focus on it in future videos. But I also don't just want to drone on and on and on about stuff that is not going to be understandable until you know the rest. Now, typically in AI War, there are sort of three things you want to do first. One, check the galactic map to see what your surroundings are. We're going to skip that. Two is invest in doing some research. We're going to skip that. We're going to move straight line to building defenses. The number one most important objective you have is to not get your home world blown up. We'll get to everything else in a bit, but this is the human home command station. There's a bunch of tool tips in this game. Don't worry about those for now. But it says your command center, you live here. If this is destroyed, you lose. That's in the gray near the top of the box there. Number one job, don't let that get destroyed. There's a couple things we want to do in order to make that happen. And in order to just make it a little bit easier, I'm going to change some of our settings here. So if we go to settings, automation, can show if we want to auto build stuff. And these can get kind of expensive. It says defensive assault frigates wherever possible, consume a ton of energy, so use it very carefully. For now, though, at the beginning, there's no reason not to have it on that I know of. We can worry about later. I've also got engineers automatically on. They help build things faster. Set them to auto work, meaning go off and do tasks on their own. All of those things. Then if we zoom out, it's simply using the mouse wheel. And you can hold it down and just drag the thing around if you want. We are going to get defenses set up. Now, the wormholes are the only way they can enter. We have Thaf, Shinda, and Vazirani. And this is actually a better than normal starting setup because particularly in this game, this is a change from the first AI war, they tend to have wormholes off in a lot of different directions. They don't tend to be grouped together and that makes it going to make it a little easier for us to defend. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go over to the build tab or we can just hit B on it right here along this side control panel. And oh my goodness, there's a bunch of stuff. Don't worry about most of it for now. We're gonna concern ourselves with number one, turrets. And we don't have to concern ourselves with how much stuff it's gonna cost yet either. We'll worry about resources later, but there's no way, another change from the first game, there's no way to outbuild your resources in putting up defenses at the very beginning of the game. You can't outbuild your resources until you've expanded a little bit. I'll, we'll get into why. But just know that we don't have to worry about that for now. Important thing here is the number. We've got 06060605. We do have a force field. That's protecting our command station. That's good. We don't have any static defenses that can fight back. We have some ships. We'll be adding those frigates that we had set to automatically build. But we want to make totally sure that we're secure in here before we do anything else. Let's take a look at some of what we have. Now, first of all, the turrets, six of each. And so if we figure that, we look at the range here, like they can protect against protect against both of those and this one over here. So we've really got two directions to defend against. Now, there's a couple, there's multiple ways you can do the defenses. I'm gonna do the beginner basic strategy way. I'm not going to try and do anything advanced. There are better ways to do this. In the long run, I'm going to want to do an adaptation of a strategy I used in the first game. But the main thing is right now, 
let's say we wanted to secure the entry points to our system, then we might want to just place down turrets and split them half and half. That's what we're going to do here. And let's just throw them in and we're just, we're clicking wherever we want them. And that circle of course is the firing range. So anything within that circle is fair game. And that means if we put them here, fire as soon as stuff comes in. And putting stuff between the wormholes and the command station, always a good idea because they're gonna beeline for this more often than not. Okay, so, and actually pretty much always. So then we have concussion turrets. So let's put those up and look, these have a much bigger range. So actually like if we place this, we could place this up right about here. And that way it could cover not just Thaf, but you can see it's covering a significant distance of the approach on the other vector as well. We can build up to six of these. You can't build them exactly on top of each other, so we're just gonna do there. And then if you wanna build a bunch of them at once, check out what the upper right says. Could control to build five at a time, alt to build 10, and hold both to hold 50. Now, of course, we can't build anywhere near that many yet. But again, we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing here. Make sure we're covering the wormholes and the command station. And I'm just gonna hit control, so it's gonna build all three of the remaining ones, placing them at once. There we go. Okay, now grenade launcher turrets. That's the third type that we have. And again, we're not concerned with what these specifically do yet. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit easier to place them. We'll put three there. Move up here. About there should work. There we go. Okay, now those are gonna be built. And then we have pike turrets. I only have five here. I'm gonna put three on this side. And then I'll put the other two over here. Force field's already in place. Tachyon arrays, we're gonna want those two. Those reveal cloaked enemy ships. So if we put one here, one up here, and in this case, let's say they get back past our defenses. It'd be nice to have one down here by the command station. So anything cloaked that gets really close here, we're gonna see it there as well. Tractor arrays, those lock onto en enemy ships, preventing them from moving, but not firing. So you can see there's a divided up, we know all these are of the type turret. That means they shoot at them. And then these, our other stuff. You can see the tractor arrays are divided up and we've got Planet, Murdoch, Jorviad Guard. We don't have to care about that now. We will explain that later. So we can see we build a total of, looks like 13 tractor arrays to stop ships as they enter. And of course the value of that is, doesn't stop them from firing, but if we can hold them in place while our turrets pound on them, the idea is that they don't ever get within range of our command station. So that's our goal here. And we can use that control place again to build five here. And then maybe we'll add another one. And then we wanna build all the rest over here. You can see again, they can cover both wormholes. And then that's only a lets us build the one from these. It doesn't combine them together. So I've gotta build that one. And now I'll press the alt, there it goes. And everything there is built. These are the ones that we had set to build automatically. Just hasn't done yet because we didn't unpause it. And again, there are other things here that we will get to, but we have built all of our defenses at the moment. So what we wanna do now is unpause and see all this stuff build. Now you see it's building these, these are the engineers and we can zoom in here. We can see that's what the engineers look like. And by the way, if you wanna get a different view, you can hold Q, turn the mouse. You can see it's, it's they're all focusing on this. And this is the factory, which is pumping out ships for us. We'll learn more about those later. But that's just automatically working without us giving it any orders. This right here, let's take a look at that. Now that is an assault frigate. And you can see it's got sort of this outline form. And then as it builds, it will eventually shift. See, these take a while to build. We've got new ships here. These are Corvettes, concussion Corvettes. So there's all kinds of things going on here. Look at all these ships coming out. And you got icons for them if you zoom out past a certain point. And now look, they went away. Because we have the engineers doing jobs on their own, so now they're moving out here. So let's see, these are some tractor arrays that are finished. 
take a look around at those. They're basically little balls. They almost sort of look like mines, but they're actually not. This right here, this is our ambush turret, and I love the I love the detail on some of this stuff. I mean, a lot of the game you spend zoomed out, but look at the... That is cool. There's grenade launchers. We're building some of those, so we'll take a look at that when they're finished. Up, oh, but they're not going to get finished yet. You see, they're building on their own. If you look at the number here real close, it's it, the, the hull amount and percentage. It's going up slowly. If you look at the bottom, it's still under construction, 94, 92. 4.2. They still build on their own. They just build a lot faster if they have help. Okay, now here's the pike turrets. We can take a look around at those. It certainly looks like they've got pikes out the front of them. And so basically the engineers go around autonomously and working on stuff. You, it's more efficient if you micromanage them, but then you also have to spend the effort to micromanage them. They kind of move in fits and starts. Which is a strange difference from the first game, because they didn't behave that way. Here's a concussion turret. Let's get right in here on those. Okay. So you can see, like, even at the smaller level, there's a lot of detail on this stuff. Looks like we've got a finished grenade launcher turret. Indeed. And, you know, these aren't just some little, like, these things really look like they could launch grenades. And even the coloring and design seems to fit with what it is that they're doing. So a lot of effort went into the art here. Even though from the top it sort of looks like a war game. I think we've got one of these. Yeah, there's a Watchman frigate. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so we've sort of got the triangular design there on those. And our ships are now, in fact, finished. So I'm just going to repause. You can see we've gone almost four minutes in. So we've accomplished our first objective. We have defenses in place. Now if they attack us, we're not undefended. We don't lose the game immediately. Now let's also notice in the lower right, we've got for the selected ships, and that in this case, just the Watchmen forget it. it tells you exactly what you have selected. There's attack move. And there's other standing orders as well. The main thing we need to know is we want everything in pursuit mode that's going to be in the system itself. These are called station keeping because they can't use wormholes, so they can't leave the system. They're purely defensive. And pursuit mode, they'll act on their own in hunting down enemies, kiting them, which means shooting from as far a distance as possible, and so forth. By default, your ship will only move where you tell them to, but will shoot freely. You can press V to toggle pursuit mode. So we can turn that off if we want. And that is there because, let me show real quick, there's a bit of an incongruity here. It says all units auto kite. And uh, pursuit slash free roaming defender mode, auto kite, they're all the same thing. Before we can really do much else that is useful, we really need to understand some of our resources. We're going to take a look at the top toolbar for a bit here. And this is metal right there by the anvil. Says the maximum is two and a half million. We currently have 760k. We started with more than that. We started with two million flat, but all of our initial buildup sapped most of it. Not all of it. You can see we've got 3,400 coming in and nothing going out. And if we unpause here for a moment, you can see, okay, that's going up now. And if you click on it, no active metal flows. We're getting metal income per planet. If we were spending on anything, it would show how much we're spending. I'm just gonna repause here, but that display won't show up. It'll just say you'd have to have it unpaused to show the metal flows. So you need to have the game in motion. So that metal purely used to build things. We have a maximum storage capacity. Energy. We are currently using almost half, and energy is a maintenance resource. Metal is how fast you can build stuff, more or less. Energy is how much stuff you can have active at once. Because once you reach the limit, stuff will start shutting down. So you don't want to reach the limit. And then we can see where it's coming from and going and oh my goodness, look at all this stuff. Yeah. Don't worry, we're not going to understand all of it. But you see down here, we're producing 500k on Murdoch. The point is that it gives you a big breakdown. Okay? We can see the turrets the tachyon arrays, some of the stuff in here is stuff that we built. And they are consuming 
a certain amount. Then we have science, which is used to unlock stuff, research to improve the capabilities, or to get new capabilities entirely. It's gained primarily by claiming new planets and holding them for a while. And you can see our current science is 15 and a half thousand, and we're still extracting some from Murdoch. Hacking, got this sort of this little spy hat and blindfold there to indicate that person. I like the way, by the way, that everything's a different color. You know, it's not just a different design, it's a different color. It just really makes things stand out super obviously. But used to exploit flaws in the AI's internal network. Detailed history of all the hacks we've done, we have done none. But this will be necessary to acquire some of the things that we need to get. Okay, AI progress. This is generally considered the single most important number on our HUD. AI progress, the best analogy I've heard of, if you own a home, you'd consider pests. So if you have a few ants come in, you stomp them or you sweep them up, you throw them away and move on with your life. You don't worry about it too much. You're not gonna be thinking about those ants a week from now. On the other hand, if you, you know, find a couple wasp nests around your house, you're gonna take that a little more seriously. You're probably gonna get some spray for it. Or if you have a big, huge colony of ants or something else in that nature, cockroaches, whatever, you know, you're probably gonna get some chemicals to deal with that and take some precautions to make sure that you aren't injured in the process of eliminating them. But again, it's still a fairly brief thing. And then if you, on the other hand, if you start to see larger predators around, maybe you see, depending on where in the world you live, you might see a cougar or a larger animal, lion or a bear. Then you sort of hit the panic button. And, you know, you're calling in governmental resources. You're saying, look, we need people with tranquilizers and guns and, you know, people who are trained to deal with this here. We need them here now. You know, we don't want these wild animals wreaking havoc on our pets and our property and even us. The AI progress basically measures where the AI is on that scale. How do they view the human resistance? And right now, we're an ant. We are absolutely an ant. You start the game at 10 AI progress, but if you look down at some of the little different settings in here, you can see we're at difficulty four. Um, they're gonna unlock counterattacks if it gets up to 60, hunter waves at 240, reconquest waves at 170, and it's not important to know what those are right now as to know that when you reach these thresholds, bad things will happen. Okay, so again, we've got detail here. And you see at zero seconds when the game started, the AI progress went up from zero to 10. The resistance against the AI begins. And all of these detail windows are all additions. The history of the hacking, the breakdown of the energy, breakdown of the metal, that whole um, detail of AI progress. All of those are new additions to this game from the first one. And it's a great addition because now if you forget, like why is my energy so low? And you forget that you built something that was really expensive or you just built a whole bunch of new turrets on a new border planet or whatever. You can go and see that and then you can make adjustments instead of having to hunt through every planet. So the information is really there at your fingertips. This icon here is the threat, sort of the bullseye thing. And this says how much is ready to come after us. And that's 0 0.36 strength at the moment. 358 and I think this number is always a thousandth of this number the decimal point moved over three times so I think like this is the raw threat and then when it converts it to strength it divides it by a thousand so that was a little bit more confusing for me at first but that's how that works and there's none on any explored or watched planets meaning this is how much there is in total we don't know where any of it is right now and then this is the total strength of attacking enemy ships on all your team's planets. And there's nothing to see there because it's not happened. So we've got metal to build stuff. We've got energy to maintain it. Science to invest in new things. Hacking to use for hacking type of things. AI progress, threat, and currently attacking ships. And so those are our key numbers on the HUD. So we have now made it through a whopping four minutes of AI War 2, almost four minutes. In this session, we learned how to build defenses in our 
home system. We learned that defending our home system is of the utmost priority. And we learned the key resource numbers on the toolbar at the top of the hut. So if any of that was unclear, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. Next time, we're going to work our way into some other stuff. We're going to take a look at science, take a look at fleets, and at least move in the direction of doing some more expansion. See you then.